Doom. Fast-paced demon cranking action that can run on a microwave. Its innovative gameplay and fancy graphics for its time made it a hit back in 1993, and the ease of which you can both run and mod Doom has made it keep a dedicated modding community for over three decades. Over the years, people have created not just great sets of levels for Doom, but also incredible works of art. I'm here today to fail at both. This is not my first rodeo of Doom mapping. I started doing this three years back during mandatory online school, where I would often make maps while half listening to my teachers ramble about something that probably wasn't important. However, my experience does not match the length of time I've been mapping, as in that time I've only done Doom mapping on and off when I felt like it. Often I would stop because I felt there was no point in mapping, as the garbage I made did not feel worthy of any uploads online. This changes today, with my new purpose being to create half of a megawatt and to document my experience on YouTube. If you enjoyed this documentation like and subscribe william if you have anything cool to say or just want to make fun of my mapping skills you should leave a comment and trust me i will read all of them and i will be judging you anyways with that spiel out of the way i have some rules for the wall that you should understand First of all, if you don't know it already, a Doom Rod is the term for a Doom Map or a set of Doom Maps, with a Megawad being a full 32 levels. The 32 levels come from the most popular Doom game for modding and mapping, Doom 2, with the game featuring 32 levels, divided into 30 standard levels and 2 secret levels. I will be making 16 standard maps for my WAD, which is half of Megawad. Second of all, I will be speed mapping, which if you couldn't tell by the name, is making maps fast. For my maps, I've set a goal of around 30 minutes for each map, which is about all level of most of speed mapping. Traditionally, speed mappers have 24 hours to make an entire Doom Mega Wad, which if you take out 8 hours for sleeping, eating, and hopefully showering, leaves you with 16 hours, which then divided evenly in the time for all 32 maps gives you 30 minutes per map, like I'm doing. Third of all, while I'll be making 16 standard levels for the Wad, my good buddy old pal Josh will be making 2 secret levels. This will be his first time mapping or really doing any sort of level designing, which will inevitably lead to either very interesting or very poor level design. He doesn't have to speed map like I'm doing, so he has all the time in the world to let his little heart out. However, that should be taken with a grain of salt, as he will inevitably procrastinate until he's basically under the same time restraints that I have, or he might not finish at all. Last of all, these are the technical and design limitations that I'll be working with. I will be using Ultimate Doom Builder to make my maps using Doom 2 assets, and I'll be designing my maps to be played with the GZ Doom Source port, so that's a jumping feature and crouching feature, but my maps will have both of these disabled as the Doom Gods intended. To save time, I will also only be designing any enemy and supply placements for the ultra violence difficulty of Doom 2. Additionally, all of the maps are good for a pistol start and I tested all the levels for it. That's it for the guidelines for the WAD's creation. Now all that's left is to actually make the maps or the levels of the WAD, as so I'll be using both words interchangeably as I go insane writing this script. Being the first map I've made in a decent amount of time essentially guaranteed that I'd be putting a lot of effort into figuring things out again. While I was trying to figure out things, I was also focused on trying to become a map creating machine. This involved trying to figure out tricks that can speed up certain parts of the map making process, such as selecting an entire sector and then entering line mode to edit textures on walls much quicker. I even learned that space bars used to pan around, which was much better than my previous method of zooming in and out with the scroll wheel to focus on things, and this revelation changed my life. Anyways, besides all the things I had to do when starting out, I had to think about what the map should be. As I will of every other map, I decided that a good opening to the whole mega wad would be some sort of prison break, and as such this map is themed around busting out of a prison. As with most other vanilla asset Doom 2 maps, its theming isn't the most clear thing in the world, a theme that we will be seeing prevail throughout the whole journey. The only thing other than the map's name that points to a prison break theme is the two sets of prison bars on a map, which were a pretty bad choice of something to put into your first map in a while, as they were fairly Really complicated and time consuming to make, but I was just figuring things out. I also decided to try and connect the maps in a megawatt very loosely, and as such, I had to make a connection to map 2. I knew immediately I was going to run out of creativity and make a sewer map for level 2, so at the end of map 1, I, I, I made it so you go down slightly at the end as if you're going into a sewer. It's very subtle, but you'll soon come to realize that it's one of the most logical map transitions in the whole WAD, and things will only get worse from here until I give up entirely when I connect a marble temple with an underground parking lot. Overall, busting out is an alright start for the Megawad, but I did go over the 30 minute goal by about 6 minutes, which happened for the first few levels as I was starting out. 
As I said before, I immediately ran out of ideas on literally the second map and made a sewer level. Although half of the motivation behind making a sewer level, the second level was pure spite of sewer levels. I made sure this level had it all, like the tunnels that take you through a river of sewage, a random room full of boxes, metal pillars that vaguely resemble pipes, and even maintenance tunnels at the end of the level. The level ends with you going up some stairs to presumably go back up into the surface world, which is very subtle but still fairly logical. I decided to copy Underhaul, Doom 2's second level, it's also a super level, even more by introducing the double barreled shotgun in this level. If you've played Doom 2, you understand just how incredibly good feeling and powerful a double barreled shotgun feels. I mean seriously, it's one of my favorite video game weapons of all time, and it's from a game that came out about 30 years ago. Anyways, this is the first map where I decided to care about lighting, which is honestly a pretty Pretty bad choice from when you're trying to speed map, but I think the added level of false quality makes up for it. Overall, this level is honestly the best out of the initial few levels, which you might understand when you see the next map I made. For some reason, I was thinking about Doom 2's urban levels and even some Doom Wad's urban levels, and I thought to myself, why hasn't there been any rural levels? That's what I set out to fix, but with only 30 minutes to make the level, I quickly realized that there was no time for me to cook up some rural town map. I compromised by having one lonely house on a map, surrounded by fences. It's honestly too much effort to make a good outdoor map when you're doing speed mapping. So this map was one of the few times in a megawatt that Doom Guy gets to touch grass. This map ends with some weird forest path that leads you to a fight with an arch vial, which I mostly put in the narrow forest path because I was reminded of that one plutonium map. Once you get past the arch vial, you exit the level by pressing a switch on a marble wall, which slightly leads into the next level. Overall, out of the initial three maps in a wad, this one is the weakest if you excuse the first map for being my first in a while. Right after dealing with the arch vial at the end of map 3, you're about to face another one! This time, however, the setting is a really cool temple. I made this map to introduce more open arena spaces to the wild, as I noticed that so far, everything has been a series of hallways, with even the outdoor map being relatively cramped. After facing off against the arch vial, you go into a room full of enemies, and when you kill a big cacko demon, there's even more enemies. Yeah, I wanted to take advantage of the big room I made, what gives? This level ends with you picking up a blue skull key, which really opens the door to the exit room just by picking it up. There isn't really a connection to the next level in the Mega Wad at the end of the temple, and it's up to your imagination what happens, because at this point, I give up on doing such a thing. Overall, the map isn't too bad for what essentially is three rooms full of monsters, which is a recurring theme in the wad. Due to time constraints and incompetence, a lot of the levels in the wad are just the player going through like 3 to 5 rooms full of monsters, though I admit that it's a lot more nuanced than to make it out to be. It's true, this map does feature 6 imps in an elevator. Besides that, there's this underground mine theme throughout the level, which is relatively easy to do with Doom 2's default textures, as there's a ton of wood and rock textures. Really, the only highlight of the level is the elevator sequence, which does in fact feature 6 imps, which took so long to make that the rest of the level is two tiny rooms full of monsters. This issue, where it takes too much time to give a level a cool bit, is another prevailing theme throughout this wad, where for each level I had to decide between giving it a cool bit or just making it a sequence of arena rooms. I made this level because of that wooden walkways look cool in Doom, which combined with the vague jungle theme creates something that isn't visually terrible. As for the level itself, it's also not terrible. It starts with a lost soul in the player's face, which is a great start, and kicks off with a really cool fight against imps in a cramped hallway. There's even some Doom parkour and an imp firing squad at the end of the level. What is there not to love? I give it a 10 out of 10, and I'm sure critics around the world would agree. Really metal map name, I know. It was inspired by some of the weirdly vague and downright menacing names of some of the maps in other Doom Wads. Like how Plutonia's first level is just named Congo, which doesn't really make sense unless you care about the Plutonia lore. Anyways, the name is Tri because there's three main areas, which is truly astonishing. Each area contains a key, and when you get the third one, you get the not only exit, but also realizes a ripoff of tricks and traps. I had to make the theme a temple again because I realized that the only thing that could exist in the jungle, other than the jungle, would be a cool temple. And maybe a village, but I think my friend Josh's experience in the Vietnam War taught me not to do that. I give this level 3 golden stars, just for being slightly non-linear. Again, another level that does not falsely advertise. There are in fact two revenants behind those pillars on this level, along with a double-barreled shotgun and a decaying sense of determination. If you think I'm going to address the sudden thematic shift from cool jungle temples to underground tunnels and parking lots, 
You'd be wrong because I don't even know why I did this. I started off this level thinking of some sick idea for like a half industrial, half temple level. But the moment I laid out the first room, I thought of an underground roadway. And from there it all came crashing down. It's a good thing that I suddenly decided to switch to an urban theme. It's about to switch, the rest of the world would just be Doom Guy's journey into the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Overall, it's another map that's just a sequence of arenas for the player to live out all of their demon blasting hopes and dreams. Okay, so it's Monday night and I'm running out of time. I need to get this video done by Wednesday morning because if I don't fit my regular upload schedule, the YouTube gods will send me to the Shadow Realm. The problem is that I have 8 maps left to make. Yes, you heard that right. 8 maps. But the other thing is that Josh bailed on being cool for once. He has significantly more depressing priorities right now, and I will respect that. I love balls. So unfortunately, there will be no secret levels in the wad. On top of that, I still need time to write the script, record it, trim it, and edit the video. So with the clock ticking, I need to take action. For the remaining 8 maps of the wad, I'm cutting the time limit to 15 minutes. That's going to lead to a drop in quality, but it has to be done. For the penultimate level of the wad, I'm going to be spending as much time as I want, because that just seems cool. Now that you've been briefed on the crisis, let's get back to watching this tragedy unfold in real time. I was hit immediately by the 15 minute time goal, and I was slightly stressed, but I had to keep going forward. With the last level being a parking lot, I could finally make a bunch of urban maps, which meant I had to stress less on ideas. This map is supposed to be some weird balcony area on top of some buildings, hence the sky and the way in the title. It features our best pal the Revenant again, in all of his bony rocket launching glory. The level is really short and easy, but that mostly comes from adjusting to the new time limit. This level came out of a need for a cool industrial map, and although I'm pretty sure this feels like being cool. There's the return of the iconic pillars that sort of look like pipes, and even the only crusher in the entire wad, with its extremely slow and conveniencing movement being vital to the level. Overall, this level is pretty uneventful, but it does the job well enough. That's right. I knew there was going to be a yearning for a second sewer level, and I just had to answer. While not as awesome as the first sewer level in the WAD, the sequel comes packed with the introduction of two new enemies, the Arachnotron and the Mancubus. Truly, one of the levels of all time. For this level, I set out to make the most complicated layout that I could make within a given 15 minutes, and the result didn't disappoint. This level has it all, from tight corridors to slightly less tight corridors. Remember the level try? Well, it is almost like that. But now the player has four choices. One of them is a closet with two specters in it, and the rest of the options are fun corridors for blasting demons. As the name of the level implies, this is the computer level of the wad. On top of such a cool theme, there's also the only plasma gun in the whole wad on this level. You can use it to maybe kill a hell knight if you do the level in the right order, but otherwise it is just here to hit the player with a small dose of dopamine. If you like computers, you're gonna love this level, trust me. This level actually has a very creative name, and I'll tell you why. There's this bridge in the level that's missing, and it's in the middle of two buildings. And there's this concept in America that there's a missing middle of housing density, which is the setting of this level. If you fail to wrap your brain around the intense mathematical formula that makes this level's name clever, please consult your physician. Anyways, this is another urban level with bridges, switches, and rooms full of imps. If you're into that, good for you, pal. This level is essentially a boss level for the urban levels of the WAD, because the last two levels of the WAD take place in hell. There's a funny ambush in the level's second room, with surprise chain gunners to keep you on your feet. After dealing with the ambush, you get strapped with a rocket launcher and a million rockets, plus some health, and begin the tightest cyber demon boss fight in Doom WAD history. This fight is genuinely the only slightly difficult part of the entire WAD, because you need to consistently run in circles and hit your rockets on the cyber demon, while avoiding their rockets and avoiding blasting yourself with rockets. It took me a few tries to get past it, and I added a mega sphere to the arena in mercy to myself. Once that cyber demon is dealt with, you end up. While traditionally a Doom mod can end with like 10 hell levels, this wad ends with just 2. I made such a bold move by choice, and definitely not because I originally planned to make a full 32 level megawatt. Anyways, I got rid of the 15 minute time limit for this level, and I completed it in about 1.5 hours. Which, while not enough time to make a masterpiece, it is certainly enough time to give this level an aura of quality that's not present anywhere else in the wad. 
This level being the only full hell theme level in the whole world gave way to easy creativity with the scenery, but the layout was not anything special. It's just a simple linear quest for keys, which ends with a really bad fight against a bunch of barons. The highlight of this map, in my opinion, is the funny huge door that leads to a small thing joke, which I stole directly from Portal 2's big door leads to a small thing joke that was a million times funnier. Anyways, once you're done with this level, you're on to the final boss, and just you wait to see just how epic this boss fight is. Overall, I had an alright experience of making a Doom Wad. I have a newly found firm belief that projects like making Doom Wads should be taken at a slow pace to minimize burnout and maximize enjoyment. If you're looking to make your own Doom Wad, there's a number of resources online with websites like YouTube, and all of the tools that you'll need are free, including the resource wads for the original Doom games. If this video got you interested in playing Doom Wads, I recommend checking out something like Plutonia for a difficult and well-designed experience that's a thousand times better than my wad. If you'd like to play the wad that I made, you'll need to get GZ Doom and Doom 2, then download the wad from the link in the description and play away. That's it for today, thanks for watching.